So what's up, guys? This is my first, I think it's my first product review. I wanted to um, do a video on primarily because it's a product that I just got that I'm going to use and I'm going to shoot some video for. I've got a, um, a trip to Las Vegas that I'm going to take in a few days. And I thought to myself, I'm going to take some video and I need a gimbal. And I have not used a gimbal. Certainly, I have not used a gimbal for my... Um, with my camera before or with my phone before I've usually used it with a camera and it's usually a pain in the ass but um, I decided I was going to give it a try I was going to do a um, for this trip I was going to shoot some video I'm going to try it with this gimbal and this is the uh, Van Top Nimble M3 it's a three axis gimbal stabilizer and it's um, that's significant the fact that it is three axis um, and I will explain to you why but this is what it looks like i got it from amazon um got it for a good price and it is looks great this is what comes inside of it you get this nifty bag and actually the bag is one of the main reasons why i wanted to do this both the, the um i want to buy this particular gimbal both the bag and a video and surprisingly there are not many videos that are out there or tutorials that are out there for this gimbal and it's an actually it's actually a pretty nice product um and there's a wealth of information in um that comes with it so that's probably why there's not many videos but there are many videos on youtube on on using a gimbal um but i did this video because i wanted to like i say show how a noob um uses a gimbal first time user and um, I wanted to give people a sense of what it takes to get this thing up and running. Now, a gimbal is different from a other types of stabilizers and other types of um, like selfie sticks or that sort of thing because of this very thing right here. Because you want it to be able to sway and you want it to be really milky smooth. Whereas a stabilizer, other types of stabilizer or a regular stick or your hand, when you walk, um, your body picks up the vibrations of each step. So your body is sending the vibrations from your feet to, through to your hands and through to the phone or whatever camera device that you're using to shoot. So a stabilizer, what that does is it um, it disperses the vibration. So it's silky smooth. And it's also when you pan, and this takes some getting used to, I have to say, uh, especially if you're someone who's used to hand holding a camera in order to shoot with it. This swaying business, look at this. So this is this is what you're dealing with. You're walking around and, and, and you're doing this. So this has some getting used to the fact that this part of it sways, but you want it to do that. You actually want to be able to have this move. And once you get used to it, you will find that um, once you get the, the right kind of technique going, you'll find that this is really good because it, it's able to pick up and you're able to pick up people walking around you, beside you. You're able to easily, smoothly pan. And that's the other great thing that, that, um, that, is uh is supported with a gimbal like this that's why it's called three axis by the way um so it is this uh m3 now again i told you one of the things i got this because it's uh it's rather expensive I, I don't know for a gimbal maybe maybe not totally expensive but it was up there on the price range probably in the medium range of it but i got this because of the video that i saw which was probably one of the only videos excellent video one of the things i like so much about it is the app that comes with it on the video that i saw i thought that the app did a whole lot now mind you this is a, um, a galaxy um, s8 plus and i just want to you know note for you guys uh, it's not my primary phone. It's not my main driver of a phone. Um, I have a Note 10 that I use as my main driver, and I always get the the non uh, the, the 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 phone that's not the most current. Uh, but anyway, it is a um, I use this strictly as a backup phone, and I'm using it at, for the purposes of this as the camera that I plan on using. So um, let me do this and go back here um so you want to go on to 
the um, f to the website for uh, oops, not where I want to go. You want to go to the website for the uh, uh, for the Play Store, and you want to pick up the um, the app. And I'll have a video. I'll have a thing inside to to show you how that where you what the app looks like i'll show i'll have some footage for you on that okay so this is what the app looks like um once you turn it once you um get it open for the first time let me just give you a warning something that i found very odd is it asks you for your basic your access to your storage access to your um camera to your to the audio and video but it also asks you for your phone access to the phone and access to your locations. If you do not give it that, it will not sync with the gimbal, right? So you want your the phone, the Bluetooth on the phone to Bluetooth sync with the gimbal. And that way the gimbal is able to control the phone. These, these um, uh, uh, controls here control the, the, um, the phone here. If you do not give it access to your phone and location it may be one or the other but if you don't give it all the um uh access it requests it will not sync the bluetooth to your phone so anyway once you've done that you hit enter and now i've already done this so here it is this is this won't even this will come up and it will remain blank now it's it says as soon as you it's looking for the bluetooth now i don't have the gimbal on right so i want to first turn the damn thing on you want to hold two seconds and allow it to beep. And actually, once it does and you've actually synced it, it starts to, it, it puts it in the proper setting. Um, and that actually becomes stiff, right? It's not as fluid as it was a minute ago. Now, n notice how it's not, it's not swaying like it was a moment ago. It actually controls the motor, which... Um, calibrates it and actually the very first thing that it's going to want to do once you get it is is it's once you get the bluetooth part of this working is it's going to ask to calibrate once it's calibrated every time you turn it back on and you sync it it will go to the correct calibrated mode so this is the cali the correct calibrated mode now look it looks like it's kind of on an angle um if you go like this it looks like it's it's kind of on an angle but believe it or not it is not on an angle it is actually perfectly calibrated uh, right now and if you ever you're you know decide to well I want to I want to zoom down or I want to zoom up or you want or you change any of these settings or anything there's a trigger here on the on the on the back and I can show you that there's a trigger right there and you would think the trigger would actually be to start filming but it is not it resets the phone to where it was supposed to be see it just actually it just i'll show it to you again it uh let's say i do one of these these numbers and i point right there i want to click that trigger that gun and it resets it to the perfect calibrated mode okay um that's the power button that is actually it looks like your record button i haven't done any recording again i'm not I'm not due to leave for a few days, so once I'm out on out and about in Las Vegas, I will do the actual recording, and I will show you the functionality here um, of these uh, as I test them out in real time. Um, this right here, this dial, this is kind of an annoyance to me, actually, because it's a zoom dial, and I don't know, you can't get smooth zooming through here. This looks like it's a, I don't know if it's a digital and optical zoom. It looks like it is probably... A, um, it looks to me like it's an uh, it's a digital zoom. So, but look how awkward this is. You would never be able, particularly controlling the gimbal and everything else. You would never be able to. Maybe you may not be able to bring camera a little bit closer here, and maybe you can get a better sense of it. But it is absolutely, um, you know, you're 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 sort of shaking the whole thing trying to get this you're not going to get a smooth zoom i don't think with it but what i do like about this and again this is you probably can't see it but this is a dial right here a dial function that's right here that's doing the zoom but what i do like about it is that you can press this in and it changes its functionality to a um to now it controls the up and down um right so that's it it actually it it actually does what this does, right? These these can be interchangeable, which is I like actually. I, I like that it that it is able to do that. Um, but you're not going to get a smooth zoom with this. Again, you have to you have to you want to punch in there, 
and that's going to do it. So um, I am going to, the next thing I'm going to do on this video is I'm actually going to put my phone in there so you can kind of see what that, that is, because that is kind of a little bit of a tricky thing. Okay, guys, so let's go over. I want to show you how I got this sucker in here, and it is, a, it is a little bit tricky. But before I do that, I should, you know, mention that it is extremely important that you charge this sucker for the first time, right? Look here, there's a USB right here, USB port. This needs to be charged because, as I mentioned before, when it is off, it is basically, you know, the, the uh, whoops, saw that. Um, the uh, gimbal basically flies back and forth. It has no stability to it when it is off. Uh, I should have mentioned that the, um, the bottom part of it is that stand actually can come off. It comes off and on. And actually, I'm glad it fell off because this is what it looks like when it comes in the, the case, when you pull it out of the case on your first unboxing, is it basically looks like this. Um, and here is my phone. I'm going to turn it off. So on the gimbal itself, you can follow the instructions one, two, three as to as to uh, what you need to do to get this thing sort of, uh, 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 you know, some of the pieces together. But it really takes a little bit of time to get used to that. So here is, as I mentioned, these feet, they, they come off and actually they can be used. I think that I think they are a standard size for a um, for a tripod. So you could use this as a as to hold a tripod to help. Uh, to attach to a tripod to hold it. But anyway, these so uh, this comes off uh, fairly easy. Um, by the way, in case those are wondering, this is plastic. It is not metal. Um, so that, that gives it a lightweight feel, although it isn't. I don't know if you dropped it, how sturdy it would be if, if it fell. Um, but the buttons look like they're pretty secure on here. Um, they are, I like the way they feel. I like the tactile feel of it and the, uh, the buttons, uh, this kind of goes, this is kind of as a circular deal here, power. And of course the shoot, I showed you earlier, the dial and the trigger here. Uh, so what you want to do when you, when you put this puppy in, and by the way, I was very concerned about breaking the damn thing. So I didn't want to pull too much. I didn't want to jerk it around too much. I usually keep my Samsung, all of my phones I keep in a case because I'm a Butterfingers. I tend to drop my phones and I don't want to damage them. But um, since this is my backup phone, I don't care as much about it. But I do have an out of box case and it will fit in the case. I mean, the, the case will fit on the gimbal. But um, I really did not care that much for the, um, I don't know, uh, the, the, the way it sat in the, um, in the gimbal with the, uh, with, with that part of the case on there. So I decided to take it off and it just works much, much better, particularly in the grooves here. I think you, you can probably see right here, let me take my hands off of this right here. There are some grooves in the, in the phone s sits in here. And if you have a case on it, the worst thing, of course, is that it's too thick and it won't fit in these little grooves here. Or um, this is rubbery. This is kind of a, a soft rubber here that you don't, I didn't want to scratch up. So I wanted to make sure that um, that, that fit very well. So I, I, I'm not using the, um, the, the case that would fit on it. Okay, so this is the gimbal without the phone or anything in it. So this is what it what it's going to look like kind of when it comes out of the bag. And what you want to do is you want to have the gimbal like this, right? You want to have it so that this part is down and this part is here is uh, facing up. So it's, so it's like this sort of thing. And then what you want to do is you want to place your phone with, in this case, it's a Samsung phone, but um, you want to place it with the groove, the top here, which would be where your um, where you would hear your phone calls. You want to have that at the very top and you want to put it in, into the actual gimbal by prying this thing apart, right? So you want to just fit it in there and just open these, open the mouth there. So you've got a situation where it's like this, right? Now, this is a locked position right here, but it can be easily unlocked by just simply doing that, right? So it locks, it, when, once you get it to this position, it, it, it holds. And then it comes, it, it comes unloose here. It actually may come in the, in, the, in the bag like this. I can't remember. But 
this locks, this is unlocked. Okay, so now you're in this situation where, and again, mine's is now calibrated, so it's it's stable. It's more in a better position than it was when I first uh, took it out. But one of the things that you can do, and this is what gave me the most amount of agita, is that back here, right here, and let me just zoom in so that you can kind of see that a little bit better. If I can get my zoomer, uh, right back here is an adjustment this right here adjusts right and this by the way right here is the counterweight the s8 plus needed the counterweight i uh, did not have it on the counterweight and i couldn't get it balanced quite right so i had to go in the bag and in the bag you'll find your usb cable let me get that actually um so let me zoom out so in your uh trusty case you are going to have, uh, this is what the interior looks like. Very nice bag, by the way. This is, this is really um, solid material. This isn't like a squishy foam. This, is, this keeps its, its shape, which will probably, like I'm going to put this in my suitcase. So it's going to probably add bulk to my suitcase, which I'm not too happy with. But... Oh, well, by the way, I, and I, I may not have mentioned it, but I did not expect this to be as big as it was. So that really kind of threw me for a loop inside of your this is what the interior of the case looks like. And inside of here are is your manual and quick start guide, which is, by the way, guys, in, in today's era where you get flimsy um pictures and, and that kind of stuff that is not the case with this gimbal this gimbal has this guide right here is thick and it has a lot of information in it and it is mostly english by the way so it's not a lot of foreign foreign uh, uh words in there it's a lot of english and then a quick start guy excellent excellent right written material for this uh for this gimbal i appreciated that a great deal um so when you get this on here the counterweight is right here and this is again an s8 plus and i needed the counterweight and it looks like this this is what the counterweight looks like um this actually this part of it may actually peel off i don't know yet but it comes in here along with your micro usb charger and you know you want to as i said before this is the gimbal is going to come dead so it's going to come without a charge you want to charge it and you want to keep it charged i think this if I remember correctly, and I had a, and I, again, I looked at so many, I'm not sure, but I think this is a 15 hour uh, charge that this has. So it will last um, 15 hours before it needs to charge. It also has the ability, I think, to charge your phone because I, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that. Again, I looked at many of these and I may be uh, mistaking the, um, the functionality. But anyway, so this is uh, the case itself, and, that's, and that is that. And so you want to get this thing on here. And once you get this on here, if you need the counterweight, put the counterweight. But you want to get this as much like, like so as possible. Right? You want to get it as much like this as possible. Um, so you're going to put, I had to put on the counterweight. And then right here, as I was trying to get to before, is this area is adjustable right and i got a lot of uh fear and uh, anxiety trying to adjust that but let me show you it does pull apart it does not go a whole lot and you can see this gap hole here it does not go a whole lot and i thought you had to maybe press this here or something no it just you can pull on it and i think this may be maximum right now and look that gap is gone so that is the um that is the max, this is the maximum in, the other way was the maximum out. Notice what it does to the, to, the, uh, to the actual phone here. Once I've got it all the way in, at least for my S8, look at that. It's totally off balance, right? So you have to adjust the gimbal so that you can pull this out enough to balance. Now it's too much, right? See that? Now it's, it's too much. So you want to go here. Bring that in, boom. Now it's perfect, right? So this is so that's part of the fine adjustments that you need to do on this. Um, it's here, the counterweight, and um, 
of course, sliding how much you slide the actual phone in and out of this area, the actual sleeve itself will contribute to the balance. So again, if I, if I didn't have this all the way in and I had say pulled it out, look at that. If it's not all the way in and pulled out, this is, it throws it off balance, right? Gimbals, one of the things about gimbals is they need to be absolutely balanced perfectly and calibrated perfectly. That's one of the other differences between it and a stabilizer. You have to balance this because it is literally being, um, being uh, uh, the gimbal um, balances as you walk so that you can, so that it's as, it's as smooth a walk as possible. So once you get this thing on there and you get it the way you want, uh, and the way, and as close to possible, as close as possible, to the actual, um, you know, to the actual uh, uh, place you want it to be. Again, that's when you're going to turn it on for the first time. It will ask you to calibrate. Once it calibrates for the first time, and let me show you this. This was also something that kind of threw me off. Once it's properly calibrated and synced, these two lights will be green. You have to hold this for two seconds. These two lights will be green. When I did it, one reason why I knew I was still had problems is this was green and this was red. If this is green, if this is green, which means it's powered on and this is red, you got problems. It's still not calibrated and you're not ready to go yet. So once you get it calibrated, this will be green and that will be green. And then, you know, you're good to go. And then uh, there you are. A perfectly calibrated phone. And then um, you can go out there and start doing your your filming. So. Uh, I'm going to next go out and I am going to show you some footage that I shot with the with the uh, the Nimble uh, M3. By the way, this is the opening screen that you, that everyone will see once you turn the thing on for the first time and it will automatically sync. And now you are good to go. All right. Boom. Now I am uh, going to go out and do some walking around in Las Vegas. Okay, guys. So I am now in beautiful Las Vegas, as you can see. And this is the, I um, can't remember what hotel this is. This is like my first, my first day in. And you'll see that I have the gimbal now. Let me just note or point something out that, you know, there is a technique for walking with a gimbal that um, maximizes the stabilization so you don't get any bouncing. I am not practicing that, <laughs> as you can clearly see. So the astute eye is can really notice some bounce here. There is some bounce on my walking, as you can see sort of <clears throat> as I continue walking down uh, every few steps, there is, a, um, there is a bounce. You're supposed to, in order to get maximum smoothness, you're supposed to almost do like a... Um, you know, you're supposed to kind of walk from your from your knees and kind of cushion your 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 step to not have bouncing. But even with that, I think this is really smooth. And one of the things that I think you're going to notice is um, I can zoom up. I can I mean I can um, pan up. I can pan left as I am right here um, and I can easily pan back to the right. Now, it does take some getting used to. I'm going to warn you right now. That's the Wynn Hotel. You can see the beautiful waterfalls coming down there um, and folks coming. This is during COVID, so you have people who are, uh, some are masked, some are not. Um, but you can see how smooth that pan is, and you can see how smooth this stuff is uh, going forward. But it does take some getting used to, and I'm going to show you some very specific times where I kind of lost control of the panning. But so this is we're going upstairs here. Um, again, this is we're going across the street from the Wynn Hotel to a mall that's across the street. And I, I went there primarily because I haven't been in a mall in a long time. Malls are disappearing. So and that is the Las Vegas Strip, as you can see there. Um, <clears throat> very nice day. Beautiful day. Uh, this camera is actually on the S8. is really it's quite stunning in terms of the uh, the image quality. I don't even need like a um, a uh, a separate uh, uh, video camera for this. This was this 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 camera was just perfect for this. But you'll see, like right here, um, 
look at it sort of move to the left and then I had to center it. That sort of thing happens. And again, remember I showed you that trigger in the front. You pull that trigger and it recenters everything. See, so sometimes you're walking along and um, here we are inside of the actual um, mall. And I had to do this a couple of times, like right here. I sort of lost... The other thing is you lose the orientation sometimes, and the button is really kind of easy to to push up and down as you're going. And if you forget that you know up is 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 going up and down is going down or something like that, you can easily lose orientation. Sometimes I like to have the um, the controls reversed so that um, it seems it seems much more natural because. Um, you know, like in this case, is here I am using the left pan uh, and the uh, right uh, pan, but I think I lost the panning ability. So, um, look, that right there, we see how it jerked immediately to the center in it? That's the trigger. That's the advantage of having the trigger. If you can't, for whatever reason, get your orientation right with those buttons, click that trigger and that gets you right back to where you, where you need to be center, dead center. Um, so <clears throat> when you calibrate, that's what you're calibrating for is to be able to get you to dead center and then you move left and right as needed. So this is the next day and I'm going up a flight of stairs. This is almost near my hotel. We're, we're over by the Excalibur. If people know the, um, the strip at all, you'll know that, uh, as soon as you come into Las Vegas, um, like for instance, from Los Angeles and you hit the strip, um, the first hotel, I think, is the Luxor. That's the New York, New York Hotel, MGM across the street. My hotel was across the street from the, from the MGM. It was actually a resort. But here's an example of, look at that, how that swung wildly to the, to, the, to the left and was up. Sometimes, for whatever reason, I lost a little bit control, not used to it, lost a little bit control. So I had to, you know, sort of uh, swing it all the way too much, and then, and then I got it too much. Again, going up down sort of uh, was angled down and then up again um this is over by the new york new york hotel i was able to um to sort of it took some time uh, uh, listen um working a gimbal takes time because you're doing with a sort of a 360 degree axis and um having to deal with controlling for that axis and then controlling the buttons and all that kind of stuff it takes a little bit of time so you'll see that there are times where like this i intentionally panned over so this wasn't a mistake and i panned back so uh and i wanted to look left as well you also sometimes will have the kind of the instinct to just move your body to the left sometimes i know i had that on on some occasions i just wanted to move my whole body left but the whole advantage of this three-axle gimbal is that you don't have to move, pivot your body from your waist. You can just use the controls and do it. So, uh, again, here I am walking. And I have to say, to some extent, the um, zooming up and down was much more, me not zooming, panning up and down is much more difficult than left and right. That's me trying to get used to using that control and remember the even though it is sort of stiffer the um camera wants to swing your phone wants to swing on this thing so um that's the other thing you're issue you're, you're dealing with like look at this i'm about to walk into that pole practically i totally lost control of uh <laughs> of this whole uh camera the other thing I, I need to mention um, is that you cannot, cannot work the controls on this gimbal, um, on the app, while the phone is on the gimbal. Again, it goes back to the fact that the phone, although it's on a stabilizer, it is completely, you, it, your, touch, your touch screen is very difficult to manage because it is not, you know, it's swinging on this thing. And in addition, the, as you saw in the, in the previous video, the, the, um, gimbal itself sort of hugs the phone and that top portion of the phone blocks some of where you actually have to touch to get to so you cannot operate the app while it's on the gimbal at least i couldn't maybe some other people can but i couldn't get it to work because you can't actually get 
to the topmost portion of the screen and slide down the menu to go back or forward or whatever. So that was a, a drawback I found. Cannot use the, uh, the controls while the gimbal's on the phone. So once again, that trigger button is fantastic. You hit that trigger button and you're back to dead center and you're back to controlling it. Here again is another situation where um, the um, gimbal sort of swings out to the left or swings out to the right. And I either have to move my wrist around to try and get it or my body around or I have to pull the trigger to snap it all to the, to the center. But you want this kind of thing. You want it to be nice and smooth, silky smooth. So you want it to kind of be floating in air to some extent uh, to control it. So, uh, so man, anyway, that's, that, that's pretty much my um, use of this gimbal. Um, nimble, what is it, the Nimble N2 or, or whatever. I, I said it at the beginning. I'll put a graphic down at the, bo at the bottom uh, at the end credit so that you can see it. But... A great gimbal, my first gimbal. It's a really great gimbal. Some issues here and there, flaws here and there. One of them being I wish there was a wrist strap that came with it, um, unfortunately, because my hands are kind of not, a, you know, big, huge hands. And this thing has a base that is really big, is really quite wide. Um, and with in my hands, I would have liked to have had a wrist strap that I could attach to the gimbal and around my wrist so that if, I hit anything or someone bumped into me or whatever and I dropped the damn thing it wouldn't fall to the ground I would actually be able to hold on to it so um, but anyway I think a good gimbal as you can see it does what it's supposed to do it pans it um, it, it, it uh, pans up down left and right and um, it is a great stabilizer in terms of being able to really um, give you very smooth shots very uh, easy going shots so it was great using it, and I used it uh, quite a bit during my time in uh, Vegas, and um, I would recommend getting this thing as long as you're ready to deal with the, uh, with the curve, with the learning curve. So that's the end of my stop, and um, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and uh, there you go. All right, bye.